so today we are going to discuss about jams jellies and pickles as you know jams and jellies are principally made from varieties of fruits sometimes even some of the vegetables namely sweet potatoes tomatoes carrots and some legumes are used to prepare jams and jellies dessert or jams are product manufactured with one or combination of fruit ingredients with combination of some of the optional ingredients like varieties of spices food ingredient fruit ingredients must be matured and properly prepared including fresh concentrated frozen or canned fruits pickling you know it is an ancient art of food preservation process of preserving food include anaerobic fermentation in either brine that is salt solution to produce acid or storing in acid solution for which mostly vinegar is being used resulting food preparation is known as pickles which is an edible product preserved and flavored in solution of common salt and vinegar along with spices and oils jams and jellies we will talk about these in detail jams are normally produced by any one kind of fruit for which either a whole or sliced fresh or fresh stored raw material or fruit pulp or fruit sludge fruit slurry is thickened by boiling with continuous stirring but sometimes this boiling is also done under vacuum at 65 to 80 degree centigrade which offers advantage of preserving the aroma and color but boiling under vacuum has one important disadvantage is that there is absence of sucrose inversion and the low caramelization which is desired in the product because these reactions produce characteristic taste of jams when it is boiled in an open kettle optimal ph of 3 that is very low ph is required for gel formation which is adjusted by the addition of lactic citric or tartaric acid depending upon the requirement jellies are gelled food which is prepared from one or a permitted combination of fruit juice ingredients and one or any combination of optional ingredients which is concentrated with or without the heat in this fruit juice is filtered or strained liquid extracted with or without application of pe application of heat with or without addition of water from mature properly prepared fruits that are fresh frozen or canned fruits fruits used for jellies include apple apricot blackberry black raspberry cherry fig gooseberry grape grapefruit guava orange peach pineapple pomegranate pear quince raspberry red raspberry strawberry etc most important thing for jelly preparation is that if fruits contain good amount of pectin it will help in the formation of jelly now let us see essential ingredients in jams and jellies jams and jellies are products based in texture formation characterized jams are characterized by the formation of special viscous structure and in jelly gel formation is must and both properties are developed by interaction of sugar pectic substances and acidity that is low ph at around 3 3.5 in jams 
Viscosity is the result of an interaction between sugar and pectin in presence of high fiber, that is cellulose and hemicellulose, because for preparation of jam, whole bulk is used. All cellulose materials are present in the product and effects of, effects of cellulose and hemicellulose molecules do not permit the formation of a continuous gel. In jellies, clarified or strange juices with very low fiber content are used. Hence, the relationship between pectin and sugar permits formation of a continuous gel structure. Sugar, jams and jellies contain uh, at approximately about 65% of the sugar. Types and concentration of sugar is responsible for characteristic taste in jams and jellies. Added sugar, normally sucrose, does not have the same effect on this important quality factor. Jam and jellies fall under the category of so-called intermediate products having water activity ranging between 0 0.80 to 0.85. These products are not self-preserved because of water activity values, are not low enough to control microbial growth or chemical reactions. Principal microbiological problems are with mold and yeast and not with bacteria for jam and jelly. Next is pectin. It is very complex molecule formed by polymer of the galacturonic acid. Degree of esterification indicates the capacity of pectin to form a gel. Gel formation is produced by relationship between pectin, water in the fruit, and sugar under a controlled pH. High methoxy pectin gel at acid pH that should be uh, lower than 3.5 pH and presence of sugar is must, whereas low methoxy pectin gels at, even at higher pH, but the presence of divalent cations, specifically calcium ion, is must for gel formation. Here you can see the Monomeric structure, basic structure of pectin, that is the galacturonic acid. This is monomeric unit of high methoxy pectin. There is a methyl group attached with carboxyl group. Here you can see the high methoxy pectin structure. Acid. An essential component of, in jams and jellies because low pH is required. Fruits used for making jams and jellies have normally low pH because acid stabilizes relation between pectin and sugar, which is required for preparation of jams and jellies. Berries have low pH because of their content of some common organic acids, specifically ascorbic acid, citric acid, malic acid, and tartaric acid present in different foods, different fruits in different amounts. These acids can be used to increase the acidity in jams and jellies. Acids also help to produce inversion of sugar at the beginning of the process in which sugar is converted to glucose and fructose. This is also known as invert sugar, as you know, which may uh, improve quality of products by increasing the brightness, reducing crystallization, and reducing the sugar flavor in different products. Now you can see the composition of various jams. Uh, in case of moisture, moisture contains ranges from 31% uh, to uh, almost around 37% in apricots, whereas total sugar ranges uh, between 51% uh, to 59.1%. Total acid content ranges between 0 0.37 in blackberries jam to 1.14% uh, in apricot jam. Ash contained also varies between 0 0.23 to 0 
to 8% in cherries. Uh, this jam also contains dietary fiber ranging from 0.43 to 1.20% in blackberries and raspberries jams. This is overall composition of various jams. Now let us discuss about mechanism of formation of pectin gels. Most commonly accepted theory of gel formation is that mechanism of gelling involves sticking of polysaccharide chains to form junction joints. For gel formation, as we have already discussed that sugar, acid, water and pectin must be present. Protons of acid shifts the equilibrium between ionized and unionized groups. Added sugar further decreases hydration of pectin by competing for water, thereby lowering the water activity. Hence, water is less free to solvate polysaccharides, so there is increased hydrophobic interaction between methyl esters group. Thus, due to loss of some of their charges and hydration, Polymer molecules can now associate over a portion of their length, forming junctions. Thus, a network of polymer chain is formed that entraps aqueous solution of solute molecules. Finally, upon cooling, unstable dispersion of a hydrated pectin forms gels. Now let us discuss about various factors affecting gel formation. A firm gel is that which is firm enough to stand without appreciable deformation and yet tender enough to spread readily on the bread. A firm gel depends on various factors including pectin. As percent pectin increase in the mixture, firmness of jellies produced on cooling obviously increases. So, satisfactory jelly is observed to be obtained with around 1% of pectin, but quantity will vary with quality of pectin preparation, average molecular weight of pectin molecules, and obviously degree of methylation. Now, degree of methylation in pectin is very important when concerned to gel formation. Excellent jellies are prepared from pectin with wide range of methoxy content. Maximum gelling appears at about 8%. This represents esterification of around half of the carboxyl group. Preparations in which more than half of the carboxyl groups are in methyl ester forms are classified as high methoxy pectins, whereas high methoxy pectins gel sufficient acid and sugar is present. Preparations in which less than half of the carboxyl groups are uh, formed in uh, methyl ester form, that is lesser than 7%, is known as low methoxy pectin. Low methoxy pectins gels only in the presence of divalent cations. Low methoxy pectins can form a gel even if percentage of solids are very low. And these pectins do not require the presence of sugar for formation of gels. But divalent cations, that is calcium ion, react with carboxyl group on the molecules of pectic acid to form a bridge between them. pH. Most pectic products do not form jellies until pH is lower to 3.5 or lesser than this. Firmness of jellies increases as pH decreases. With very low pH, amount of pectin required is very less and satisfactory gel still forms. Next important ingredient is sugar, which is necessary for formation of pectin gels and it must be present in minimum concentration. Mostly jellies are made with 65% of sugar. If 
its amount is more than 65%, then crystallization may occur not only on the surface of the jelly, but occasionally even within the jelly, which is undesirable. Here you can see pictorial uh, diagram of formation of jelly. For this, mostly fruit juice or extract of fruits with water is mixed with sugar and continuously boiling with continuous stirring is done. Then citric acid is added to it and continuously it is heated with uh, stirring. Uh, then, um, uh, after uh, it starts thickening, uh, end point is judged by sheet test. After that, uh, after it is prepared, filling, uh, uh, filling, uh, filling in hot form is done in the bottles, then it is cooled and waxing is done above the surface of the jelly to prevent any sort of uh, air contact uh, to lengthen its shelf life. Uh, so after waxing, it is capped and stored in low temperature. Next is pickles. It is easy to prepare with right ingredients and it can be preserved for months by preparation of pickles, any fruits or vegetables, whatever is used, uh, uh, mostly increase their shelf life by preparation of pickle. They serve as a flavor enhancer and consume typically in small quantities. They are added to increase palatability of the meal they also aid in digestion and are good appetizers. Wide varieties of different pickles are made with a mixture of fruits or vegetables, which are chopped, then immersed in a liquid, often oil or lemon juice or vinegar with different spices and salts. Varieties of pickles include lemon, mango, amla, ginger, green chili, mixed vegetables, cucumber, cabbage, garlic, carrot, and sometimes also fish, prawns, eggs, or meat pickles are available in the market. Addition of salt and acid to pickle gives it a salty or sour taste. Most distinguishing characteristic of pickle is its low pH that is around 4.6. This prevents bacterial spoilage and preserves the perishable foods for months. Antimicrobial herbs and spices, for example, mustard seed, mustard seed, garlic, cinnamon, or, uh, or cloves are also added to make pickles. Even edible oils, which cover the upper surface of pickle, play a part as an oxygen excluding covering for pre-pickled matter and uh, aids to improve its shelf life. Now types of pickling. There are two types. First one is long fermentation based pickling, which require curing period up to several weeks at room temperature, whereas second type belong to quick unfermented pickling, which is made by adding acid that is vinegar to prevent bacterial growth. Now classification of pickles. There are varieties of pickles available in the market because they are prepared. First one is acid-based pickles. The uh, most common liquid for preparing acid pickling is vinegar. This is an impure dilute solution of acetic acid obtained by fermentation. Vinegar-based pickles include pickled ginger, pickled vegetables, which may be a mixture of onion, carrot, cauliflower, cauliflower etc., pickled sausages, etc. Next one is dry salted pickles, in which salt is used, which has two effects when added to fruit or vegetables. First, it draws water by osmosis, and second, it triggers fermentation process of lactic, bit, lactic bacteria. Resultant fermentation produces particularly rich range of complex flavors. Most common dry cured pickle include sauerkraut, dry salted pickled limes and lemons, 
plums, etc. Next one is brine based pickles. Brine pickling works by combination of osmosis and lactic fermentation. Even traditionally, cucumber pickles in brine, uh, along with other flavoring, flavorings, have been prepared. Other examples of brine based pickles include brine pickled vegetables, garlic, chilies, etc. Next one is lye pickling. Olives cannot be eaten in raw state and require pickling to render them digestible. Before pickling, olives require treatment with lye, that is sodium hydroxide, to remove substances which is toxic to bacteria responsible for causing fermentation. Once pickled, olives are packaged in various forms with addition of varieties of herbs and spices in brine, vinegar, and oil or dried and salted, depending upon the need it is prepared. Next one is pickles in sugar. Fruits are sometimes first pickled using vinegar, then it is stored in a syrup or honey. Alternately, sweet salt syrup is meant by adding sugar to vinegar. Such pickles are normally served with meats or cheeses. Examples include watermelon rinds, walnuts, etc. Next one is oily pickles. Oil finds its way into pickles. Various species of mushrooms are brine pickled before storage in olive oil. Even mustard oil and other vegetable oils are added to dry salted fruit and vegetable pickles, for example, lemon, mango, chili pickles, etc., along with spices. Now, let us discuss about preservation principles. Commercial preservation relies upon conversion of fermentable carbohydrates into organic acids during bulk storage and or addition of sufficient amount of sugar, vinegar, and other ingredients to fully cured and packed products which preclude any microbial growth. Organic acids, oils, salt, and spices have antimicrobial properties at suitable concentration, especially in combinations to preserve the pickles. Pickles in brine as such or after fermentation need some amount of preservative or pasteurization which prevent the spoilage. Pickling process is done in two stages. First one is by curing or fermentation with dry salting or fermentation in brine or salting without fermentation. And second stage obviously includes finishing and packing of the final products. Thank you. Thank you very much.